Well, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me today. And uh, got a nice little Suzuki V Strom 1050. It's not the XT model, but uh, nevertheless, we're going to jump on and see what she's all about. So, oh, quite top heavy with the weight there. Uh, notice that straight away. Nice, nice um, I think it's like, yeah, LCD display. Looks like there's loads of information on there. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. It's the V-twin this. Um, 90 degree V-twin. <laughs> Sounds absolutely wonderful to be honest. <laughs> right, oh, mine Mr. DHL. Here we go, hold on. Yeah, like I say, this is the V-twin this one. Obviously, going, you know, the name, the V-Strom, 1050. And uh, first first impressions, um, like I said, I just jumped on, so to give me a little bit of time to gel with the bike. Um, a, bit, a little bit late to the party with this one, to be honest, but uh, there you go, never mind. Sounds lovely, this. Nice gearbox as well, no quick shifter or auto blipper on, on this model. Um, what we like feet down. I'd, one thing I've just noticed is the pegs are, uh, they're right where, where I want to put my feet down here, the pegs are kind of in the way a little bit there. A little bit of air in actually. So yeah, mirrors are actually set up quite well, I, just, I did just adjust, adjust them. Actually that one's a little bit loose. She sounds rather nice. Here we go. I'll just warm the bike up and uh, get on the nationals. We'll see where, see how she performs. Nice to see the sun out today as well. Not really seen much of that lately, so it's not been ideal ideal weather to be out on the bikes. Lovely rider position here as well. Feet are a little bit high on the pegs there it feels, but this is just purely a first ride impression, first impressions ride review this. I've literally just jumped on. So uh, stay tuned and I'll also give you a walk around the bike in the usual way. A little bit further into the, uh, the video. Not getting any wind there at all from um, that you know from that screen's doing a pretty good job there to be honest we're only really doing 40 mile an hour here but I'm not getting any wind buffer in there at all visibility through the mirrors is very good I think the mirrors are slightly different on this one to the uh, the XT and this one also as well as being the non XT has not got the I think it's a six axis IMU the Bosch the fancy IMU for your lean angle uh, sensitive ABS and yeah the IMU the inertia inertia measurement unit that's what it stands for anyway and the uh, the other one the SIRS I think Suzuki Intelligent Rider system there's all sorts we'll run through all that in a bit anyway so stay tuned one thing I have noticed as well which would be nice is heated grips uh, they, I think they are an optional extra not sure of the premium you know what sort of premium they come at though. Brakes seem to have a nice bite there as well. But yeah, those pegs are just, just a bit annoying where they are there. You'd probably get used to it. It's got the 19 inch front wheel on here as well and the 17 inch on the rear. So it's more, I would say, more road focused, this model. It's got the Bridgestone tyres as well, I think, so. And this one, I know I keep, I'm going to keep mentioning it probably quite a lot, uh, being the non-XT, but this has got the cast aluminium wheels rather than the spoked wheels. So they do, they, they, actually, they actually do, I think it's, I think it's three models. Uh, they, they do this one, which is just the 1050. 
and they do the XT and they do the XT Tour which would be the one with all the panniers and yeah we'll run through the, the difference in prices and uh, some other information all the other information all the specs all the all the numbers in a bit seats quite comfortable can't moan there starting to steam up a little bit here <laughs> Yeah, that, that dash there, I mean, although it's like the old sort of Casio looking 80s if you like dash, but it's got all the information you need there in, you know, uh, very readable, gear indicator there in the middle, um, rev counter going around the outside there, of the gear indicator, the speed at the top, the fuel gauge, yeah, that's... Uh, got a lot of information there it's got three rider modes as well we're on currently on B at the moment selectable through this button cluster here <laughs> let's try the modes then okay see we'll go oh. change these modes some reason it's not letting me change it while I'm rolling it should do with the let's get up a little bit of speed here mode oh there you go so we're now in A which is the full power full beans we'll get on the nationals we'll open her up and we'll uh, see what you know what, what she's like it's got the outside air temperature on there as well the time uh, you can brighten or dim the screen down as well through the through the button cluster Yeah, what you'd like to stand up on if you want to give yourself a rest. Not bad, not bad there at all. Tiny bit vibey, but it is a V-twin, it is the 90 degree, the V-twin, so nothing that would bother me, I don't think. I'm only, I'm only doing low speed, so it'd probably sort itself out. No vibes through the mirrors. Not so good visibility there. The button cluster is very easy to uh, to work around as well. So you got the the mode the mode button here. I think on the on the other one, the XT, you got cruise control as well, which is adjustable through that switch. Uh, indicators, nice and easy to get to there. Horn. Give that a bib in a minute. See what she's like. And then on the right hand side here, you got your engine start stop. It's got the easy start on here. Or the one touch start whatever you want to call it so you just press it and that'll go through the motions uh, hazards at the bottom there's a lot of switch type you slide the switch across but yeah all in all she seems pretty good no problems with the overtake very smooth. Move that camera down a little bit. Yep. We'll take it up to 60 mile an hour once we get on these nationals. Lovely day today. Oh, so it's nice to see the sun out. Nice, nice note there from the engine. Not mind this mud in the road here. And the, and the intake as well. got like masses of performance but I think it's about 100 brake horsepower in all or 105 actually and 100 newton meters of torque which is a fair old amount really a fair old amount of torque what the brakes like up to 60 yeah nothing behind the brakes are very good it's got the uh, the the dual discs on the front with uh, Takiko four pop calipers and uh, the single disc on the rear, again with a Takiko, is that Takiko twin pot calibre? You can try them again actually, up to 60. Very good. Little bit of nose dive there. I didn't go like mega hard on the brakes, but so it's fairly adjustable suspension as well. It's got the, the remote preload adjuster on the rear as well, which is handy. Let's try the horn. Yeah, standard type of horn. No dramas. It's actually very, very nice to ride. 
not sure if this screen is adjustable, but... We'll have a look at that in a bit when we pull over. I can't really see, like... It's not really enough a, a big major ordeal when they're not, you know, when they're, they're not adjustable anyway. I mean, surely it's just, you set them up and you leave them, don't you? Uh, generally. Same with the uh, suspension, I suppose. Unless you've got a pillion on the rear and luggage and that, then obviously you, you could, uh, you know, the easier that is, you don't, you don't want to be getting your C-spanner out and trying to adjust the, uh, the, the suspension at the side of the road. But yeah, overall, I can't really moan so far. Very nice, like I say, I, I, it's very nice in this upright riding position here as well. Very nice. Got ABS as well. And uh, sort of the basic electronics, the Suzuki uh, mode, diff the three different modes A, B, and C, like I said before. Yeah, we'll pull over just down here and we'll have a we we'll 360 the bike on the one for all of the uh, specifications <laughs> but if you haven't subscribed to the channel consider subscribing plenty more reviews coming plenty more uh, ride outs um, got quite a, quite a few nice models coming quite excited really um, yeah, there's loads of, back, back to the bike, there's loads of accessories as well that you can spec the bike out. You know, ranging from, well, all sorts, heated grips. Um, you know, obviously the panniers. Uh, you know, lots. You can go on the Honda website or... Yeah, no worries. No worries at all. Nice little, um accessory bar there obviously I've got my GoPro on there at the moment it's nice and handy there's a, a socket as well there so you can charge your, your devices your, your, your GoPro or yeah it's nice and handy rather than I think there's one under the seat as well under the passenger seat I know on the XT the seat is adjustable I'm not sure on this model I should have done my homework a bit more shouldn't I but I know you need spanners to get a, or an allen key, not spanners, you probably need an allen key to, to whip the seat off, but not to say, not really a major ordeal, is it really? So, uh, yeah. Park we're in here in the sun. Neutral, no issues there. First up to neutral. Second down into neutral, yeah, no dramas. Side stand, no problems there. Yeah, okay. I'll leave it in gear actually. Don't want no rolling forward. There we go. Right, let's jump off and I'll run through the full specs of the bike. Right, well, here she is the 2021 Suzuki V Strom 1050. Like I say, this is the non XT model this one uh, yeah the engine is a, is a quite a powerful uh, 90 degree v-twin uh, it's actually 1037 cc fuel injected four stroke liquid cooled uh, with a double overhead cam it's got six speed gearbox nice and nice and smooth that no issues with the gearbox and uh, hydraulic clutch as well uh, also like I said before it's got the um, the electric easy start button as I demonstrated earlier the power you want all the figures uh, the power is 107.4 PS or around 105 brake horsepower at 8500 rpm and the torque 100 newton meters at 6000 rpm and that's like I say it's not not a, you know obviously the, the quickest of bikes uh, nice and easy there by the looks of it to get to your oil filter for your servicing no issues there uh, yeah see I Seat height 855 millimeters. Uh, didn't really have too much of a problem uh, getting my feet down, although I did notice that those pegs are kind of in the way a little bit there, but not really a major problem. I might find it a little bit annoying for a while, but would probably get used to it. 
the ground clearance is 165 millimeters or 6.5 inches in old money uh so yeah fairly limited there uh, overall length of the bike is 2265 millimeters with a wheelbase uh, which is a contact patch of 1555 millimeters weight of the bike 236 kilograms that's the wet weight or curb weight as we say and didn't really notice too much of a problem there uh, a little bit top heavy maybe um, yeah fuel capacity you've got a whopping 20 litres uh, fuel capacity there uh, with a claim 57.65 mpg that's according to the Suzuki website uh, I would say around 250 mile range suspension on the front there is the I think it's a 43 millimeter actually not too exactly sure on the size it's the kyb uh, upside down type uh, adjustable there you see the adjuster down there and the adjusters on the top there so yeah the rear is a single link type of type on the rear there tucked away in there we'll go around the other side and it is adjustable for yeah, it's got your pre your preload adjuster there actually, the remote preload adjuster, which is very handy that. Uh, brakes on the front are 310 millimeter discs, dual discs with the four pot to Kiko calipers, ABS as well there. Uh, wheels, 19 inch on the front there. What sort of tires we got on here? We've got the Bridgestone Battle Axe Adventure 41s and the rear uh, 17 inch on the rear yeah like I say they're cast aluminium on on this model so they're not spoked uh, rear brakes single disc on the rear with a two pot tucked away somewhere <laughs> yeah two pot caliber there so yeah <clears throat> the bike comes in three colors um, Starting at actually 10,150 for this this model, uh, which is like I said before the non-XT, and the XT would be 11,850 according to the website for the XT. So what's that? Uh, 1,700 more for the XT. Uh, three times colours: glass, sapphire black, and pearl brilliant white, which would be this one. Uh, glass, sapphire black, and solid iron grey, and candy daring red and glass sapphire black as well so yeah uh, the full lcd screen we did look at that before i'll just turn her on again so you can see full lcd screen there quite a nice uh, sort of dash layout there to be honest uh three three times traction uh modes and power modes on there S selectable through the switch there the mode button so it's a b and c uh the push push start so you just physically just push this it's in gear actually so i'm not going to do it so yeah no issues actually i'll leave it on we'll look at the lights um what else can i tell you it also has the ride by wire throttle and rpm assist so that can kind of eliminate stalling of the bike yeah so the, the, the lighting let's have a look at the lighting you've got probably a bit of sun on there actually so yeah it's got the lcd lights on the front there I think this model has got different mirrors and indicators to the XT model. I'll just turn the hazards on by sliding that switch over. We'll have a look. Yeah, there you go. I think it's a non-adjustable screen on here. I think you can, but you'd have to, yeah, you'd have to undo these Allen keys on this model. It's not got the uh, the lever there to move the screen up and down. But is that really a big, a big sort of problem, really? Uh, let's have a look at the rear. Big old exhaust there. Uh, obviously the bike being Euro 5 compliant. Um, big old dustbin exhaust there, but quite nice. Quite a, quite a very very wide bike, but it has got that 20 litre fuel tank in the, in the wide bars. Uh, anyway, yeah, so moving on. So the V-Strom 1050 is coming in at 10,150. So massively cheaper than the XT Tour, which is, I think, yeah, 13,048. That's with all the luggage and uh, spoke wheels, uh, complete array of rider aids. I think it's called, yeah, the SIRS, the Suzuki Intelligent Rider System. 
and the IMU, etc., all the fancy electronics. The V Strom 1050 XT is 11,850. So, yeah, you, you're looking for this model. Uh, two, what's that? About 2,898 pounds cheaper than the XT Tour, which really is a lot of bike. It's a lot of bike there for the money. So, negatives. Uh, I did notice a few negatives. Uh, the pegs were slightly high, nothing really too major, and they were in the way a little bit. The engine was slightly vibey, but like I say, it is a V-twin, uh, that 90 degree V-twin. Uh, cruise control, obviously, this doesn't have, which would be very handy, and obviously if you wanted that, you'd have to pay for the, for the, the XT model. Um, no heated grips either. Again, same again, you'd have to, obviously, if you wanted them, you'd have to uh, spec it up for that. Uh, Another thing I did notice on this model is there's no centre stand under there. So again, the other model has it. Um, if you really wanted it, you could possibly, you know, stick one on. But yeah, uh, what else can I tell you? So yeah, this is the uh, the bike. I mean, I, I think to be honest, it's, it's it's a lot of bike for the money. You know, just turn these hazards off there. Uh, yeah, loads of information there on the uh, display. Okay, let's turn her off. So yeah, okay, I think we should uh, we should jump on and ride some more. All right, let's jump on, fire her up, take her out of gear. Oh yeah, I was going to show you that easy start. So you just physically. You don't need, need to keep your finger on it. Um, what's she like for turning? Nice and easy. It's feather in the clutch there. <laughs> no dramas. No dramas. So yeah, let me know in the comments. Could you see yourself or do you own one of these? Have you had any issues? Uh, could you see yourself going out and test riding one maybe? I'm trying to add sort of as many different models to the channel as possible. Um, so yeah, feel free, have a look on there. Plenty of other ride outs and reviews. The brakes are very good. There we go. I'm not going to go too crazy. The roads are a little bit damp in places, but yeah. Also, I've noticed as well that I stayed in rider mode A after turning the bike off and restarting the bike, which is good because you know it does annoy me a little bit sometimes when the the bike kind of does what it wants with that. And presets back to you know maybe C I don't know A, A is obviously the, the, the full power uh, a bit of gravel there on the road Just trying to find the dry line through here <laughs> still the sun's out so can't grumble there's a little village here Yeah, very impressed. Can't grumble. Nice, like I say, the, like I did say earlier, the pegs were a little bit high. Um, but the, that's probably to do with the ground clearance of the bike. It's not a massive ground clearance, actually. We'll take a right here. And uh, really dodgy crossing here. I think potentially, I mean, obviously you could use this every day for a daily commuter. It's a proper mile bunch of this, with being that, that big thousand cc twin. And uh, yeah, you can certainly rack some miles up on this and get your money's worth. And it is a lot of bike for the money, let's be honest. It's a lot of bike for the money. And if you want to spend that little bit extra, or it's not really a little bit extra, but that extra, then you could go for the XT with all the, uh, you know, the all singing and all dancing electronics and all the little bits that 
I've kind of said that you don't get on this one, you pretty much get a lot of it on the other one. You know, little things like even just as well, I say even the center stand would be something that I think I would miss. Um, so it makes your life so much easier for things like oiling the chain and cleaning the bike. Just you ain't got to keep wheeling the bike about. I know you can, there's other options, but uh, nationals. Some grunt, definitely got some grunt. <laughs> Very nice. But yeah, I would say personally, I would say it's a more focused road bike. This one, so so you got the the 19 inch front wheel, uh, 17 inch on the rear, and. This model, being being the standard one, has got like say the cast alloy wheels, which does, doesn't really bother me. It wouldn't bother me at all that because they're a lot easier to keep clean. I'm not. I, I do like the clean bike, and there's nothing worse than trying to get in there cleaning spokes. And uh, I'm not sure if they're stainless spokes on the other one, but it's just a lot more takes a lot more looking after, doesn't it? Cleaning. Nice little metallic sparkle in this paintwork as well in the white there nothing behind we'll try the horn again yeah standard type of horn you know you're never going to beat the gold wing horn that's, that's, uh, that's something else up <laughs> there is a video on the channel of the gold red if you fancy looking uh, just to hear the horn <laughs> and uh, well, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed my first impressions, ride, review of the uh, Suzuki V-Strom. All this shite on the road here. 1050. Take care, see you soon.